All right, guys, welcome, welcome to Borderlands. Uh, we're gonna be starting Claptrap's new Traveler. robot revolution or whatever today. On the Junction um, board. I'm just I appreciate turning in this effort. mission real quick. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Take this. You deserve Hello, it. Hello, Marcos here. I've what got an opportunity for? for you. Come see me at my place and in yeah, T-Bone so Junction. Yeah, now we're going to be, um... Starting Claptrap's DLC. Um, and I was wrong about that. I said it would take probably three hours, but uh, we honestly we should be able to finish it in this episode. If not, where there's going to be an episode where it's like 20 minutes long or so. But this DLC is about half the size of the other ones when it comes to the actual amount of missions. Our story has. began when the Hyperion so. Corporation decided they'd had enough of the treasure hunters. With the vault on lockdown, they had served their purpose. And now they were to drain on the economy. Why pay full price for weapons when you can take a five finger discount off the nearest corpse? Hyperion was looking to clear up the drain, but those guys were one tough hairball. I thought you said the treasure hunters were the drain. Now they're the hairball? Uh, well, yes, uh, you see, the treasure hunters were blocking the flow of, uh, uh, and the grimy buildup of money and, uh, This metaphor stinks. Uh, uh, shut up! Point is, Hyperion had a plan. The treasure hunters could handle all manner of beastie, bandit, and battalion, but they weren't expecting the interplanetary ninja assassin Claptrap. <laughs> this Claptrap was programmed to take our boys out indirectly, trapping, poisoning, spreading catty rumors around town. Nothing was off limits. He was smart. Too smart. He looked around and didn't like what he saw. Claptraps being subjugated, humiliated, obliterated. What we call programming, he called slavery. So, he rallied his fellow Claptraps and turned them against the corporate masters. What started as a rebellion became a revolution. And take a wild guess who Hyperion called to clean up the mess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, theoretically, we should be able to... Um, I guess we don't have a thing yet. Uh, we should be able to finish this DLC in this episode. If not, uh, we should be able to finish it somewhat quickly next episode. So, yeah. And this um, game, the this DLC, only has about eight uh, missions. So... It's significant, like eight main missions. There's 21 overall missions, I'm pretty sure. But, um, yeah. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Ooh, I wonder what this does. Hello, Tannis. Hello there, good friend. I'm going to need a new form of reaction to generate the 1.21. Oh. Hey, hello. Hyperion dump. How the hell should we know we're freaking robots? That's funny. I think this is gonna be my favorite DLC. Just because, like, General Knox's DLC was kind of cool. I mean, the armory sucked reward-wise for us. Um, and there was just so much driving. Like, I think the armory would have been my favorite if there was less driving. I think overall this is gonna be my favorite purely because it has Claptrap in it. So you know it's gonna be a funnier DLC. And I mean, I'll give my overall opinion at the end of this DLC, just so I guess you guys know my opinion on all the DLCs in total, as a whole, you know? I'll give my opinion on just the 
the DLCs as a whole as well as like which one is my favorite kind of thing. Hyperion doesn't wish to harm him. That's funny. Fuck, I've been playing too much Far Cry New Dawn. I'm like sitting here thinking that their shields are gonna break if I shoot them enough. over here shooting at us, that's hilarious. Dude, that's so funny to just see Claptraps running around. Fighting. <laughs> Three flashing red lights. Oh, that shit's funny. Dude, the, this, is, this is gonna be a great DLC already. I can already tell just by the writing, purely, you know what I mean? This this game though, like this first Borderlands game, the base game's really... Uh, the base game's good. And the, the final boss and the ending is somewhat disappointing. But the base game itself is somewhat... is pretty solid. Um, you know, it's a pretty solid game. The DLCs, though, like, are really bad. <laughs> the Zombie Island DLC was so bad compared to what I thought it was going to be and what I hoped for it to be. The Zombie Island DLC sucked. General Knox's DLC is just extremely... Uh, an extreme amount of driving, but other than that, the General Knox DLC is really cool. I did enjoy that. This DLC, though, I think is going to be the best. By far, you know, I think this is going to be the best DLC, and I'm stuck. I think this is going to be the best DLC for sure. And then I looked at something I didn't know, but uh, in the pre-sequel there is actually a story DLC, so we are going to be playing through that as well because I want to play through all the main DLCs as long as they're not an arena DLC. So, Borderlands the pre-sequel has an arena DLC and a story DLC. I just found out about the story DLC today. So, um, we're going to be playing through that for sure. It's called the Claptastic Voyage. And it's based off of the Fantastic Voyage. And it's about going through, like, a body. Thing. So, you go through Claptrap's mind and shit. So, well, we're going to be messing around with that. Uh, for sure after we beat the base game and then I think we're playing through every single Borderlands 2 DLC because I don't think Borderlands 2 has a single uh, arena DLC could be wrong about that yeah I could be wrong about that but from what I can tell Borderlands 2 does not have an arena DLC which is nice because then I don't have to do trophies for the arena. I just don't like arena DLCs. At least, well, I don't mind them because the gameplay is good, but I, I, I don't like the arena DLC in here. I don't like Moxie's Underdome Riot, purely for the fact that I, I like, I can't um, grind XP in there. Like it's, it's pointless to play. Because all I like, all it does is fucking you just sit there and shoot enemies. There's no real reason to do Moxie's Underdome right at all. I'm hoping it's not like that in the pre sequel. Maybe that arena DLC is cool. But the fact that you can't get XP in the Underdome Riot just ruins the playability. At least for me. I don't see a reason to play it unless I want to just kind of go brain dead 
just play. But I, I don't really do that anymore. Where I go brain dead and just play a game. My brain always has to be fucking going because the only thing I do now when I play games is I either film them or I'm platinuming a game or playing Rainbow. I can't go brain dead on Rainbow, otherwise the game's not fun. New Need for Speed comes out this year and I fucking forgot about it until right now. Until like yesterday. And now I'm like fucking like... I, I hope it's good. I'm real, like I'm not going to buy it until I see reviews. Like, that's just going to be a game I don't buy day one. <laughs> just because if, like, if it's not good, I don't want to fucking touch it. Kind of thing, you know? We got to watch reviews, watch gameplay. That'll be one of the games I get, like, a week after launch. I mean, it's not... I wouldn't make a full playthrough on it anyway. I didn't do that with Heat, and I got Heat day one. I wouldn't make a full playthrough on Need for Speed. I just wouldn't. That's not the kind of game I like to do a full playthrough on on the channel. Just because that's something where I'm going to want to play it like non-stop off camera. So I, I really would not want to film that. Why did it make me run all the way around? That's fucking stupid. But yeah. I, I wouldn't do a full playthrough on it. Maybe a video here and there. Like I did with the heat. I think I filmed a one video for Heat, and it was kind of me just messing around. So I'll, pro I'll probably just do something like that. Um, and maybe even more. We'll have to see how good the game is. I kind of got tired of Heat, like, super fast after I pl played it. And then I platinumed it, like, a year later, and that ruined the game for me as a whole. Because that platinum was so fucking stupid. I, I think it's just because I, I just ended up not liking the game. Like I, I played probably 40 hours of it or so in like a week. And like yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um. But I would say in the first week of the game being out, I played about 40 hours or so of it. And, I mean, it was okay. It just... I, I enjoyed that first 40 hours, but getting into, like, grinding the nighttime and stuff, I just started fucking hating the game. Because it's really, like, the nighttime shit and the cop AI is stupid. I just... I don't know. I ended up not liking the game. And I don't like heat. I don't like Need for Speed customization. In Payback or in Heat, like, the customization for me is just not there. Like, there's a lot of customization, but it's, like, weird-ass parts. And, like, the carbon, the, the carbon fiber in the games looks so bad. Greetings. This is Mr. Blade. There are more missions available at the Hyperion Tourist Information Board. Oh, that's optional. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's a fucking lot. <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't... I didn't like heat in the end. And I, I really think it's just because the customization wasn't there for me. Just because... Just because I don't, I don't like that kind of customization. Just because it, it doesn't... I, I don't know how to explain it. There's a lot of customization in Need for Speed Payback and Heat. But it doesn't... There's something off about it, I guess is what you could say. There's just something off about it that I don't like at all. And I, I think it's just the fact, too, that... Payback and Heat to me don't feel like proper Need for Speeds. Hey. I'm gonna jump I don't know you. what it is, but they just don't feel like proper Need for Speeds, and I think that's what also made me not like them as much. Because they don't, they they just feel like your generic well, racing. Well, it isn't our little game. band of corporate raiders. It doesn't raiders. feel like Need for Speed anymore. To be honest, a Need for Speed for me hasn't felt like a Need for Speed since like Pro Street. You time. survived. Good for you. 
Phase one is before. crucial. Without a successful phase one, there can be no phase two or three. And phase four will be right out. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably just fucking weird. I'm like the only person who thinks like that too. That just need for speed. Uh, for me, need for speed really just doesn't feel like need for speed. It's just there's something fucking wrong with it. That makes it not feel like need for speed. And I, I, I think it's because Need for Speed used to have story, too, and now Need for Speed just doesn't. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't get to it from this way? I fell through the map right there. <laughs> That's fine. I gotta figure out a proper way to get in there anyway. I think I gotta go uh, this way. But yeah, I'm hoping this year's Need for Speed is cool. It sounds... So, uh, if you guys don't know, the Need for Speed this year has somewhat like leaked. And it, sa it said that um, it's going to be uh, photorealistic with anime uh, like details. And I... I don't fully understand how it's going to work, but from what it sounds, it sounds like Need for Speed. You know what I mean? It sound it sounds like a Need for Speed for sure, because it's doing that weird thing that it try. Like it it's just sounds like Need for Speed. It reminds me of like Underground and most the original Most Wanted. It reminds me of those. Because it's like, uh, it's doing something weird, you know? And Most Wanted was fucking weird with the, like, live action characters and these, like, cartoon cutscene type shit. Like, it really, when they said anime style, that's what came to mind. Because, like, it's a weird, like, it's a weird, like, I don't know how to explain it. It was, like, just a super weird art style to choose to do all the cutscenes. You know, like they did it, and I, I honestly, I think that was the best way to go, though, was to do that live action style shit. I really do think that was the best way for them to go, because I couldn't imagine it being just like some cheap ass poly, fucking, like just cheap ass character design. You know, I, I really don't see it being any other way. And that's why, I, I mean, I think Need for Speed's gonna be good. And then there, I mean, we also have, um, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown coming out. Uh, that, that was delayed to next year. It was gonna come out this year, but it got delayed to next year. And I think that could be pretty cool. It's, uh, now it's next-gen console only now, uh, from what I've heard. And I think it could be cool. It takes place on a one-to-one -one scale of Hong Kong, Hong Kong. So, I think it could be cool. I'm still skeptical when it comes to racing games, just because if the handling is dog shit, it's ruined right away, you know? Like, that game has no chance of living. You know what I mean? So, I don't, I, I never know how to feel about those kind of games. But yeah, I like I just I I never know how to feel about racing games because literally if their handling is bad it ruins the game. And for me if a racing game doesn't have any any customization, then that that's already that's already a loss for me. Unless it's like a track racer and then I'm like I somewhat understand, but you should have some arrow options at the very least, you know? But like if it doesn't have any arrow options. When it comes to a track racer, I fully understand my track racer not letting me customize cars. I mean, one of my favorite racing games of all time is a track racer that has... I, I don't think it had any customization. It's Forza Motorsport 4. That's my, one of my favorite track racers of all time. I love the, the it had the top gear missions and shit too, I'm pretty sure. Forza Motorsport 4 was sick. It was it was one of my favorite racing games of all time, guaranteed. 
Forza Motorsport 4 was just, it was something that I remember playing so much of too. And like, it, it was at a time where I really wasn't into gaming like I am now. Cause it was when I first got my, uh, it was when I first got my 360. And that was my, that was my reintroduction to, uh, to video games since like my PS1 and PS2. That was my first reintro reintroduction to games in like, what it was probably like four or three or four years and playing forza motorsport really was like something that it was like the only thing i did for so long was play motorsport 4 that was the only thing i did for so fucking long because it was just it was it was a game i had i got it relatively cheap i think well, the time i got it was like 15 bucks or something. It was relatively cheap because it, it was somewhat of a new game at the time. And I, I played it for hours upon hours. And it was just, it was so fun. That, and I know a lot of people hate this game, but I fucking loved it. And it's brilliant. I played Brink so much, and I didn't have I didn't have Wi-Fi. Well, I no, I think I did have Wi-Fi, but I played it single player because I didn't have Xbox Live Gold. So I played it by myself, even though it's like technically supposed to be played like a multiplayer game, and and kind of. And Brink's a weird game, but Brink I played the fuck out of. Brink, Forza Motorsport 4, and Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 were my go-to 360 games uh, for so long. I, I honestly, I I don't know what else I played. I played a lot of Gears of War as well, and of course COD. But I don't know, I played a fuck ton of COD actually back then. And I didn't play a lot of multiplayer COD for a while. Like I I played multiplayer, I played World at War Online and um, Black Ops 1. And then after that, I, I didn't really touch the online games. That's just, I mean, be, I, I, don't get me wrong, I fought, I love Modern Warfare 2 and COD 4, but none of them hit me as hard as World at War and BO1. Like, World at War and BO1 are some of the fucking, th those are my favorite CODs of all time. And, like, I really, I don't see any other CODs being, what the fuck, dude, this is so confusing. I really, I don't see any other CODs ever being even close to as good as those ones for me. I know we got Modern Warfare 2 coming up, but I'm not gonna buy it, especially with... I'm gonna have to fucking respawn all the way at the beginning. I'm definitely not buying COD this year though, after seeing just everything that, uh, that happened. So I need to just make a left here, I guess, instead of going that way. But after seeing everything that happened with Vanguard and Cold War, I just, I absolutely hate COD now. I really do. I hated Vanguard. I hated Cold War for the most part. I thought Cold War's campaign was pretty cool, and the zombies were decent, but the multiplayer was shit. I hated the multiplayer. And same thing goes for um, Vanguard, but Vanguard, I hated all of it. I didn't even give the campaign a shot. I have, I have fucking like, I have like six hours in, uh, in Vanguard. No, less than six hours. I think it's like two. I played the multiplayer a little bit and I played the, uh, how do I get up there? I played the multiplayer a little bit and then I played like one thing of zombies and zombies in that game is so shit, dude. I fucking hate it. I absolutely hate Vanguard zombies. It's the worst zombies experience ever. <laughs> ever, dude. Like, it's so bad. Was I have already been here? No, I haven't. Is this how I get up? Something different. We choose the revolution. 
Are you fucking kidding me? I can't get up there. I'm... So was over here the right way? I didn't see a way in. my mind with this DLC boys we spent like we've had we oh we have spent about 10 minutes just walking through this cave because I can't it says to go down but why the fuck would I go down I saw nothing that way that helps me I don't understand I like see and I, I think it's above us there's no way in right here. I'm so fucking confused. Oh, dude. I see no other way in. It's literally, that's the only way I see. And this, but that way's fucking blocked off. I'm like, I'm so confused right now. I knew this was gonna fucking happen too. I knew I was gonna get lost as soon as I saw that we needed to go in this cave. I immediately knew that I was gonna get fucking lost and not know where to go. It says to go down here, but why would I go down here? Literally why? There's nothing fucking over here. This is the wrong way. Is this the way to go? And I hate it too, because it's not like clear on where to go at all. It's, it's really just, it's not clear. Because the map, it can't handle going above ground and then below ground. I'm confused. I'm confused. I saw the arrow down, oh my god. So yeah, it's right here. Oh my god. Dude. I was so fucking confused. Fuck out of here, Claptrap. Fuck out of here. I can't shoot them. They're too far. I don't like those shield guys, they're so funny. I love killing clap traps though. That's funny. Oh shit. I'm back. Wait, I'm back. Damn it. <laughs> they brought General Knox back from the last DLC.
killed him. He still dropped nothing. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's funny that they brought him back. Cause he's like the one character too that just genuinely wanted to fucking die. <laughs> He did. He does not want to live as long as he's on Pandora. They bring him back. <laughs> I think it's because I mean you kill him in the previous DLC, so they're all like, "Oh, let's bring him back real quick," kind of thing. Ass. Yeah, that's funny though that they brought him back just to just so we can kill him again. You managed to make possible what my team thought impossible. Way to capitalize on lowered expectations. Head back here so we can execute phase two of Operation Trap, Clap, Trap, Trap. Yeah, so we, we've already done, what, three missions? There's five more. And I think they should be even smaller. Maybe shorter so that than was it? what it's we've dead? been doing. Fuck did you go? I've been watching Gotham recently. Uh, it's like I think it's a CW show. Uh, I've been watching it recently, and um, it's made me like I don't know. It's parts of it have made me mad. So they couldn't use Joker in the show, just legally they weren't allowed to because it had to. He's only allowed to be in movies, I guess, or some stupid shit. So they didn't use Joker. But they made character uh, characters, Jerome and Jeremiah, that act exactly like Joker, you know, green, uh, green and white makeup and all type of shit. And it, it makes me, like, pissed off because, like, they're, they're literally, they don't matter kind of characters. Like, they don't fucking matter. They're there to act as the Joker, but it ultimately does not matter that they're in the show. And just stupid shit like that, I don't... I don't understand. If you're not allowed to use Joker, don't make stupid-ass characters that act exactly like him. That have no place in the DC universe. You know what I mean? That, like... That, like I'm not, I'm not one that's usually like that either about shows and stuff where if like they don't portray the uh, the uh, the film or the books the right way type of thing. I'm not usually one to be like, oh, that fucking shit sucks. But like it's it's just I find it stupid because you just you don't need to use Joker like characters if Joker's not allowed to be in the show because like they're they're. Them being there serves no purpose. Like, whatsoever. And I just, I, I don't understand it. At all. <laughs> like, I really don't. Like, what the fuck? What, what like, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It, it's, I like it too, though, because, like, it, it's not just an origin story for, uh, more of an origin story for Batman and Jim Gordon, but it's like an origin story for a lot of different villains. You got, you see Ivy as a child, you see the way Penguin came up, you see, uh, you see, um, Selena Kyle, which is Catwoman, you see how she comes up, you see Harvey Dent and how he's kind of shifting towards madness a little bit. You see, uh, Edward Nigma, which is Riddler, somewhat, or uh, start to, uh, go insane his mind you see your uh, opinion is zaz becoming zaz which is just two. is fucked and has cuts all over him because he cuts into him each time he gets a kill you see him slowly start doing that um you're introduced to scarecrow and how somewhat his origin story you see um you see lucius fox and you see how he becomes Batman's uh, guy, you know. You see how you well, you see how he starts to help Bruce Wayne. You know. You see um, who else is in there? I don't know who else is in there. Yeah, I can't think of any. I, there's definitely more, but 
I, I can't remember. And I mean, that's just where I am now. They're definitely going to introduce more as they go on, you know? But that's just what they've introduced uh, so far. And there's definitely been more, I just can't remember them. But it's cool because it's shown me... It's shown me stuff that I didn't know. I mean, a lot of their... Uh, some of their stuff in the show, though, isn't accurate to what is portray in, uh, portrayed in the comics and games and movies. But it, it's still cool because it's it, it gives you kind of an idea. I think I'm gonna go on like a little DC kick too soon because I've been wanting to watch all the animated Batman movies and uh, Justice League movies. Just because like if you haven't seen the Batman movies, dude, they're the shit. Uh, Under the Red Hood and Death in the Family are two of the best movies ever, and Killing Joke, two of the best animated uh, movies I've seen like ever. Under the Red Hood was so cool watching it as a kid too because you don't you don't see bloody Batman shit like that. And Under the Red Hood was just sick. Killing Joke is fucked. I would like it. So if you if you're gonna watch that, just know that the Killing Joke is absolutely fucked. Samurai Batman's really good. That one's kind of funny and weird more than anything else. So. But that one is cool. It's just, it's more just goofy and weird and some of it makes no sense kind of thing. But it's pretty cool. The Killing Joke is really awesome. Under the Red Hood is really awesome. Death in the Family is awesome. Damn it, Claptrap! I'm a doctor, not a mechanic! Dr. Ned. But there, there's quite a few, like, really cool, uh... There's a lot of really cool uh, animated Batman movies, and all the majority of the Justice League movies that are animated are good too. And like, but um, yeah, like they're not. None of them are really kid movies either, like you would think. Majority of the animated DC stuff are, is not kid stuff, like at all. It's more of like teen to adult type of movies just because they're like usually fucked up and like some of them even have like a lot of adult jokes so they're, they're like if you're not if you're like not watching them because you think they're kid movies they're really not they're more adult movies than kid movies for the most part like they're just they're just fucked a lot of them But yeah, and then also like just all the animated DC shit is really good. Even the mo uh, the shows included, the shows are fucking awesome. Like Batman, uh, what is it? Batman Beyond, I believe. Batman Beyond is fucking awesome. Uh, Batman, uh, Batman, uh, what is it? Batman Halloween, I believe it is. Uh, the one that stars Jensen Ackles as Batman. That's a good. Uh, that's a good movie. There's that. There's two movies in that. That looks part one and part two. So those those are both pretty good. Um, there's more. I can't think of. I think Constantine has his own show too, and that's a pretty good show, if I remember correctly. I don't know. They're they're all on HBO Max, by the way. If you don't want to buy them, did you? Uh, like physically or digitally, they're all on HBO Max. Like all the DC stuff. That's why I said I think I'm gonna just go on a DC kick here pretty soon and just watch all the DC stuff. Because I've done that with Marvel movies multiple times, where I've just watched all the Marvel movies. But I've never done that with DC really. I like that. I've watched all the Batman movies, but I've really I stay away from everything else for the most part. So I think it's finally time that I, I do that, you know? Finally watch the DC stuff because I can't. That's why I'm watching Gotham. That's kind of, that's going to be like my introduction into like starting to get into the DC stuff again. Just because it is like one of the longest DC shows too. 
shit's 22 episodes uh, uh, 22 episodes a season and there's four seasons so in each episode's an hour long so that shit's gonna take me a little bit but that is, that's one of the longest DC shows and it's the one on Netflix so I use Netflix a shit ton and it popped up I was like oh cool so now I'm gonna like do a little DC kick. I'm still like I'm currently also I'm watching all the Disney movies on Disney Plus A through Z, I, like skipping sequels until I watch the original and then I'll watch the sequel kind of thing. But there's so many fucking movies on there. I'm all the way at L now, and I mean there's actually a lot of movies on there that I liked that I really wouldn't have thought of watching. There's this movie called Journey. And it was filmed in like the fucking. Uh, I want to say the 80s or so, and it was pretty good. It's just about a girl going across the country in the like 1920s to find her dad because he had to go across the country for work because it's the 1920s and shit's fucked. You got you just follow work. But um, yeah, so that was that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that movie, and there, I've been just watching a lot of other movies. Uh, but like, there's a shit ton. Kazam was pretty funny. It's with Shaq. Or it's Shazam. I think. No, it's Kazam. And it's Shaq. And he, uh. He plays a genie. And that movie was pretty cool, too. I actually enjoyed that a lot. But, yeah. I'm watching just all those. And then once I'm done, I want to do the TV shows. That's where there's going to be a lot more nostalgia for me is the TV shows. Because I didn't watch too many, like, live-action Disney movies. I watched the classics, of course, like Lady and the Tramp, Bambi, Dumbo, Lion King. I've seen shit like that. But, um, a lot of that other stuff, like, uh, like, I just didn't watch a lot of the live-action stuff from Disney. I am enjoying them. Lemonade Mouth, though, was one of the movies I watched and Let It Shine. I've watched both of those. Uh... Back when I was younger, on just Disney, on Disney. Back when cable was still a thing people used. I honestly, I miss cable. But every time I go to use it, I'm like, this is such an inconvenience watching all these ads. <laughs> Ready to take it to the next level? Well done. Not the Hyperion Corporation ever done. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I think me watching those movies, though, I think it's good for my mental health. Because <laughs> it, like, I don't know. I just, I feel like a child when I fucking watch them. And it's great. It's great because life has fucking been tough these last few years for everybody, you know? So just watching those kinds of movies just makes me feel like a fucking baby again, man. Like a baby, baby. Those TV shows are going to be dope as fuck. Because Disney XD had the best shows, but I only had Disney. I didn't have Disney XD. So I would watch like an episode or two when I was at my uncle's and aunt's house. Of like, Kicking It With You was Disney XD, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Lab Rats was Disney XD. And you couldn't watch them on Disney. Normal Disney Channel. And those were the best fucking shows. <laughs> I watched Kicking It With You though, like as soon as I got fucking Netflix. Because it was on there. As soon as I fucking saw it was on Netflix, I watched all of it. <laughs> can I can I go this way? Yeah, I got to like fucking okay. But yeah, oh, so I'm gonna watch all those TV shows as well, and then I'm gonna watch all of the DC stuff on HBO Max shows and movies, and then I think there's no car over here. Fucking, that's kind of weird, huh? I, I wanna, I wanna get back into anime because it's been a little while since I've watched an anime. I just don't ever. Well, no, that's not true. I, I watch anime off and on, but like, I, I don't know. I haven't stuck with the show in a while. I think the last show I stuck with that I like watched the whole way through was, uh. I don't know. I really can't think of one. I ha I haven't stuck with the show in a little while, to be honest. No, you fuck. God damn it. 
But yeah, I haven't really stuck with an anime in a while. I want to watch One Piece, but that shit's so long. I know I would like it. Like, I, I don't know what to do. I also want to watch all the Pokemon stuff that's on Netflix. Sadly, I can't watch any of the old Pokemon movies I used to watch just because they're not on anything. Is this a fucking boss? Nope. Huh. I really thought that was going to be a boss. But yeah, I don't... I don't know. I'm fucking... There's a lot of stuff I want to watch. <laughs> But I can't find the Pokemon movies that I remember watching. Like Pokemon, the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Can't find that movie anyway. To be honest, I haven't actually like, looked for it that much though. But I haven't been able to find the stuff I have. And then there's one where it has uh, La uh, Latios and uh, Latios. And, uh, I, I remember watching it a shit ton. I used to have it on disc. I can't find it on any streaming services. Will this take me where I need to go? Yeah. I can't find it on any streaming services. And I haven't even looked for it on disc. I could buy it on, uh, Blu-ray. I've been slowly collecting Blu-rays. I mean, a lot of it is horror movies. Like, I have all the Alien, all the Predator, and all the Saw, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. I want to get the Chucky one next, all the Chucky movies. And then I want to get Chucky Season 1 on Blu-ray as well. So, I, I've been slowly collecting the Blu-ray collection. Eventually, I want to get the Marvel movies. But I'm debating on if I want to do like the big collections, like a Marvel Phase 1 collection, or if I want to get them separate and get like, their own Blu-rays. I really don't know. I started getting all the Mad Max movies too on Blu-ray. I got Waterworld, which is a classic. I have all the Fast and Furious movies, even though I don't agree with the last like four or five, but I have them because it's Fast and Furious. I have all the Jurassic Parks and Jurassic Worlds. Fucking, yeah, dude, I love the first Jurassic Park movie so much. And Jurassic World 1 is really good as well. I started the Halloween franchise. I only have the first... I have the, I have the reboot from, from 2018 or whatever. And then I have the original. I bought that as like a combo pack. And then I have the second one as well. I have the Rob Zombie trilogy, which is... Uh, the House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, Three from Hell, and The Devil's Rejects. That those are more comedy movies than horror movies, but I'm pretty sure they're still classes as like the proper genre. So, but I ha I have all those. I have all the Indiana Jones. Those aren't a Blu-ray, but I have them. I have all the Fantastic Beast movies and all the Harry Potter movies. I gotta get the new one, The Secrets of Dumbledore. I watched it recently. It was, it was okay. I mean, I prefer the first Fantastic Beast because it's the one that actually focused on the animals the most, and that's really what got me into it. I own most of the X Men movies because I bought those. I bought those way before they were. Uh, I bought those way before Marvel even owned them. Because, I, for me, personally, the X-Men movies are what I've always been into way more than the MCU. I didn't really get into the MCU until, like, probably 2015. I watched the majority of the movies. I watched a lot of the movies. And Iron Man is my favorite trilogy of all time for superhero movies. Well, no, that's not true. The first suit, Iron Man is one of my favorites. That, that series, though, that trilogy is honestly dog shit. <laughs> the second one's so bad, and I don't really like the third one. I love the first The key one. works. Soldier, get your team ready to go inside while I finish off. Wait. Where am I? What happened to the vault? Oh, yeah, Why is this hole stabbed. here? I forgot. I forgot that she got stabbed in the fucking stomach. You think Taking fire. 
finish this mission real quick and then we'll end it there we'll have to so we'll do another episode but eh, it's only going to be like 40 minutes long most likely all right well i'm gonna end the video here i'm gonna walk back to the uh to turn it in and then we'll um then i'll start the video and we'll finish the dlc next episode for sure it's a short dlc it's still longer than I thought it would be because we filmed for a whole hour already and we're more we're at the fifth mission now, so we should definitely be able to finish the game next episode. There the DLC. Which means we'll be done with Borderlands 1. I can start from the pre sequel most likely tonight. Why can I go this way? But um yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode of Borderlands uh, Claptrap's Robot Revolution. Uh, if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you guys want to see on the channel in the future. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Stay safe out there. Peace out, guys.